Let's go back, way back in time to when you first began solving linear equations simultaneously. You may have noticed that there are three possible outcomes of this process. In this video, we're going to explore these three possible outcomes in terms of generic coefficients on two straight lines. First of all, let's establish what these three scenarios actually look like. The first scenario is what happens if you take the blue line as equation one and the blue line again as equation two. In this case, every possible x and y value on the blue line, the first line, is simultaneously also on the second line. And so you end up with lots of solutions. The second scenario is what happens if you take line one as the blue line and line two as the red line. These lines never intersect. And so you end up with no solutions. The third scenario is what happens if you take a first line as the blue line again and then the third line as a line that intersects the, the blue line at a single point. You end up with one solution. Lovely. Soon you'll be solving all your linear equations using matrices, but for now let's just do it the old-fashioned way. What I'm going to do is take equation 1 and I'll multiply that by A21 and then I'll take equation 2 and multiply it by A11. So this is 1 times A11 and that gives me sorry A21 and that gives me A21 A11x plus A21 A 1, 2, y equals a to 1, b1. And I might call this equation 3. Let's put that aside for later. Now I'll take equation 2 and I'll multiply that by a11. And what I get is a11 a21 x plus a11 a22 y is equal to a11 b2. And I'll call this equation 4. And the reason I've written it this way is so I can take equation 4 minus equation 3 and have no x's. So let's do that. Equation 4 minus equation 3 gives me no x's and it gives me a11 a22 minus A21, A12, this much Y, and some constants here. We are very close to having solutions. There are some things that could get in our way. In particular, we need to be very careful about what happens if this is equal to zero. In fact, this is a very important quantity called the determinant and it tells you a lot about your system of linear equations, as we're about to see. It's so important, we'll give it a name. We'll call it delta, met for determinant. Delta equal a11, a22 minus a21, a12. And let's see what happens if delta is zero. Well, this could lead to trouble. If this is zero, then zero times y is zero, and zero may or may not be equal to this thing. If this is zero, then we've got no troubles at all. In fact, we've got the scenario where zero is equal to zero, which means for all values of y and their corresponding values of x, they're on both lines simultaneously. Let's write that down. If delta is zero and this quantity here is zero, uh, minus, minus a21 b1 is equal to zero, then there's no restriction on y whatsoever. There are infinitely many solutions. Let's see what happens if delta is zero and this quantity here is not zero. Then we've got trouble.
because what this equation here is telling us is that zero is equal to something that's not zero, such as zero is equal to one. And this is your classic scenario where you've got a contradiction, zero is equal to one, which means these two lines do not intersect. So there is no solution. Maybe I'll put a underline around that. No solution, infinitely many solutions. There's one more scenario to consider and that's what happens if delta is not equal to zero. And if delta is not equal to zero, then I can take my non-zero number here, divide both sides through by it, and I have y is equal to some constant, some single constant, which tells me that there are unique solutions. Excellent. So we've discovered something very interesting associated to a system of linear equations. There's this quantity called delta, or the determinant. And if the determinant is zero, then we're in one of these scenarios where there's infinitely many solutions or no solutions, depending on what this quantity is over here. And if delta is not zero, then there are unique solutions.